What's going on everybody? I'm Jory Goodman, the Time Teller. Welcome to another installment of Microbrand Monday. We have a Microbrand watch here in this box. We have my digital calipers. Let's just get into it. It is 4.11 p.m. Let's get down to business. All right, what do we have here? Oh, a nice little compact box. that kind of just exploded there we <laughs> a little tin okay kind of uncommon packaging we have the watch here that we're going to close in on and uh, I believe this is a prototype so I'm not sure uh, if this is the actual packaging that will come with the watch but this is kind of uncommon for microbrand Monday just kind of a tin and uh, I doubt this is how it's gonna be packaged for the normal consumer, but let's go ahead, zoom in, and we'll talk about the watch we have here today. All right, guys, so here today, we are looking at a Delos waveform, or potentially Dylos. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it. This company is a Singaporean micro brand, uh, and we can see here, we've got some interesting color schemes going on. Now, first thing, unfortunately, you guys can't really feel it because you know you're watching this through a screen, this watch is incredibly light. Let's go ahead and throw this on a scale. Okie dokie guys, so we've broken out the scale. Let's go ahead, zero it out so we're as accurate as possible. Let's take this waveform, throw it on there. 114 grams, but let's go ahead and kind of compare it to my Seiko Baby Tuna. Now, keep in mind, this waveform, it's bracelet and all. Now, here is my SRP641 baby tuna on a Barton canvas strap. Special thanks to Barton for giving me the strap. This is 116 grams. So this waveform with bracelet and all is still two grams lighter than this SRP641 baby tuna on a strap. Interesting. Now this waveform is so incredibly light thanks to the materials used. The case is reinforced titanium. The bracelet is reinforced titanium with a milled clasp. And the bezel has a ceramic insert. And since we're here, let's go ahead and talk about the crystal. It's a double domed sapphire with five layers of anti-reflective coating on the underside, which is perfect because if you were to scratch up this crystal, um, you know, sapphire doesn't scratch easily, but oftentimes when the AR coating is put on the top side of the crystal, it sometimes rubs off and it looks, you know, a little bit cloudy and just not great. So it's very nice that they're putting all those coatings on the underside of that double domed sapphire. Um, let's go ahead and talk about how it feels when we're um, you know, actuating the crown and let's go ahead and take a look at the bezel as well. All right, we can see the second hand is moving and it's not really ticking, it is somewhat sweeping and that's because this is an automatic watch. Uh, it's powered by a Seiko Instruments NH35 automatic movement. We've seen these before, we've all used them before. A very common workhorse movement, especially amongst micro brands. No complaints there. I mean, is it the most impressive movement out there? No. Uh, personally, I would prefer like a Salida just because, you know, higher beat movement, um, but do I have any issue whatsoever with the Seiko NH35? No, a ton of watches that I've owned have had this movement. Um, I already know it does hack and hand wind, but let's go ahead and test that out. The crown, fairly smooth, and oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm actuating that bezel with my thumb there, one second. Um, very smooth crown, let's pull it out. Yep, second hand has stopped, so it does hack. And then there is a little bit of resistance there and I can feel it winding. Uh, let's go ahead and move the hands around. You can see the day, or excuse me, the date just cycled through. Very smooth hand set there. Let's go ahead and thread this baby up and then we'll go ahead and talk about that bezel that, I've, that I'm inadvertently actuating with my sausage fingers here. Um, you can hear very positive ratcheting sound. 
I do have a complaint immediately though in regards to the bezel. The bezel, very, very easy to actuate. Incredibly easy. Like silky smooth, but you can see just with the tip of my thumb, I can move it a click. Okay, another issue. There's some definite play there. Do you see that? So the bezel does have some play. It's very smooth and uh, I'd be lying to you if, if I said it wasn't, you know, satisfying feeling the smoothness and the clicks. Uh, but then when you get it to a place that you want, like let's say we want to orient it with the minute hand, there's like a full couple clicks of play. Don't like that, but let's go ahead and align it at the 12 o'clock marker, okay. And uh, okay, so it hacks, it hands winds, excuse me, hand winds, has some very nice materials used, you know, sapphire crystal, uh, reinforced titanium everywhere, uh, ceramic insert on the bezel. So this is going to be fairly scratch resistant uh, when we're looking at a very functional, usable sports watch. Speaking of functionality, this watch does retain a 300 meter water resistance rating with that threaded crown. So very nice metrics there. So as we get up close to this waveform, I wanted to share with you something that really impressed me and it's the dual case finishes. Okay, so very smooth to the touch finishing here on this brush titanium, but then on the edge, as you can see, kind of borders the lug right beneath the bezel and then into the other lug. It's a nice mirrored polished finish. As you can see the reflection of my fingertip there. You know, just because this is a rough and tumble sports watch, 300 meter water resistance rating, reinforced titanium, sapphire crystal, all the anti-reflective coating you could want, um, doesn't mean it has to be rough around the edges. They did a really refined finishing, really, really nice detailing on this watch. Again, look at that dual finish there. Um, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I love to see that. And, you know, this is a reviewed watch. So this is being passed around. Multiple watch journalists have seen it before me. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be sending this out to another watch reviewer. Um, so, you know, this is held up. I know some people give titanium a bad rap for scratching a little easier than stainless steel, but the truth is titanium is actually like, I think three to four times stronger than stainless steel. So I think that this is held up quite nicely in transit and uh, yeah, no real scratches to speak of on this reinforced titanium. Um, we'll get up close. I think I see some here on this lug around uh, the hole, but what do I always say? Drilled lugs for a tool watch. That's what I love to see. Look at that. Drilled lugs. I just realized that as I was looking for those scratches. Huge plus for this waveform. Now, as we look at the dial, we can see some applied indexes on that kind of, I don't know, what do we wanna call it? Like aqua blue. I'm really bad with colors here, guys. It's some form of blue and it's beautiful and it's very, very nautical because again, it kind of mimics some idyllic body of water. Uh, sunburst, very nice and dynamic. Although we do see some very bold indexing here and the handset, again, incredibly broad. I want to see some good loom. Now, they assured me this is using Super Luminova loom. It'll glow nicely. I'm going to test that because again, that's like my favorite thing to do is to put the loom to the test. But let's just look uh, at this dial. Very, very clean actually. And uh, you know what I love? Black date wheel. It's not an eyesore. Very nice, does its job easily legible, but not like some beak in there. I want the indexes to pop, but I don't really need the date window to pop. I just need it to be there and look nice and kind of just stay aligned. And this looks clean. Everything's aligned. The border looks nice. And that dark date wheel, actually, I don't know. I don't think it is black now that I'm looking at it. I think it, is it the same color as the dial? I think it might be. Either way, it works very, very well. Let's get up close and see if I can actually identify if it's black or if it's of similar color. 
I think it is. I think it's also kind of that aqua blue green. Let's get up closer. So upon further inspection of this date window, I don't think it's a black date wheel. I misspoke. I think the date wheel is kind of mimicking the color of the dial, and that's probably why this date wheel kind of just blends in perfectly. And again, it's not an eyesore. I think more companies need to look at dark date wheels. Um, I think some companies get lazy and they just throw on the stock white date wheel and that works with some watches and other watches just kind of looks like an eyesore but uh, Dylos, Dalos, however we pronounce your company I'm gonna get corrected either way uh, you did a great job in that regard with this waveform Ooh, my favorite part of the episode we're gonna test the loom dang all right they assured me it was gonna be bright and they did not lie. One thing that surprised me, I didn't know the pip was also loomed. Look at that. Look at that, that is well done. Heck yeah guys, so some really good loom there guys, they weren't lying. Good, they took advantage of the broad handset and those bold indexes and they put some decent loom on there. Good job. Now we see some tasteful font here, waveform automatic, 300 meters, 990 feet. No complaints there. Again, I don't need a ton of text and branding on the dial, but if you're going to choose to use, you know, a font on the dial, please, choose a tasteful one, no comic sans, no crazy font. Uh, again, I think they did a good job here. So as we zoom in here uh, towards the Dylos or Dalos logo and font, again, I'm alternating here, guys, Dylos, Dalos, tomato, tomato. Um, I wanna take a look at the 12 o'clock index because if you look at the 11 o'clock and the one o'clock index, you see the borders are nicely mirrored and polished. Whereas here on the 12 o'clock, there is either some scuffs or some adhesive residue and I don't like seeing that so that is a bit of a complaint because I don't really think that's nitpicking I think that the dial of, of any watch you release should be pristine because after all uh, you're looking at those indexes to help you tell the time and that's kind of the point of a watch so um, again I think this is a pre-production watch but even still uh, I have to you know review the watch as I see it before me so I'm not gonna say that that's how everyone looks uh, but the one in front of us has a bit of an imperfection on this 12 o'clock index. All right, let's take a look at this case back. We see an anchor and some chains. We see waveform NH35 automatic, titanium, sapphire crystal, all the pertinent information. Um, let's go ahead, flip it over, measure it, and then we'll see how it feels on the wrist. Okie dokie guys, now comes the time to measure the dang thing. Let's go ahead and take a look. Excluding the crown guards or, uh, you know, the crown, it is 40.1 millimeters. Let's take a look at the lug to lug, which is, again, the most important measurement. 47 millimeter lug to lug. Let's take a look at the case thickness. 13.7 millimeters thick. Very, very reasonable, honestly. Let's go ahead and see how it wears on my seven and a half inch wrist. We'll take off of this enormous G-Shock GBDH 1001 and uh, put this baby on. All right, guys, the Dylos waveform on my seven and a half inch wrist. And you can see that lug to lug measurement is actually kind of perfect. The lugs don't like encompass the entirety of my wrist. Uh, I still have some wrist on either side. Again, guys, rule of thumb, um, you don't want the lugs like overhanging your entire wrist. It's just, it's, it's not a good look in my opinion. But Honestly, do whatever you want. Um, I think if you have bigger wrists than mine, you'll be able to pull this off just fine. And I think if you have smaller wrists than mine, you'll be able to pull it off just fine. And again, with that 40 millimeter case diameter, right within that sweet spot. Okay guys, so after spending some time with this Delos waveform, uh, I guess my biggest complaint is they never told me how to properly pronounce the name, but um, what do I think of this watch and what do I think of the watch's price? I think it's pretty impressive and here's why, okay? Especially because of the price. I have a few issues with the watch. Number one, uh, the imperfections on the 12 o'clock index, okay? I don't think that's going to be an issue with the production watches, but you know, who's to know? That's number one. Number two, uh, there's a lot of play on the bezel, okay? That is actually probably, that might be my biggest complaint now that I think about it, all right? Aside from that though, 
You have a great Seiko Instruments NH35. You have hacking and hand wind. You have a nice prim and proper date complication. Everything looks pretty pristine, again, aside from that 12 o'clock index on this watch. You have a double domed sapphire crystal with five layers of anti-reflective coating on the inside. You have a threaded crown with a 300 meter water resistance rating and reinforced titanium everywhere plus a ceramic bezel insert, I forgot to mention that. So you're getting a very competent titanium sports watch with an incredible water resistance rating. It's more competent than most of us will ever need. And you're getting it for just under 300 US dollars. That's right, $299 at the time of filming. In my opinion, that's very impressive for a fairly handsome, not enormous, gargantuan, weird, overt sports watch. It's actually, you know, well within that 40 millimeter sweet spot, really nice metrics, really nice specs, and it's titanium. For under $300, I think, I don't know, I think that's a win. But again, I would love to hear your take. Uh, these reviews mean nothing without my viewers, so I wanna thank you for hanging out with me. But again, please, what say you? Comment in the comment section. What do you think about this waveform? What could they do differently? Um, and what do you think they knocked out the park? Leave me that comment. I wanna hear from you. So thank you guys again for hanging out with me on this installment of Microbrand Monday. And special thanks to Dylos for sending me this watch to review and sponsoring this episode. You know, we can't do these episodes without these companies sending us their products to review. So literally, we can't do it without them. The support, we just can't thank them enough. And guys, for every company, Company that has sent us a product to review. Uh, it does take guts for us to spend some time with it, test it out, nitpick it, and uh, show everyone in the world with our macro lens what is going on with their products. It shows us that they really do have some guts and that they stand behind their products. So special thanks to Dylos. Um, and, and again, Thanks for helping us make these Micro Brand Monday episodes. Um, thank you to the viewers. Thank you to the certified T3 bots. Join the channel. Check out the affiliate links in the description below. There's a ton of ways to support the channel, but the easiest one is just to hang out and watch the content. So if you're watching this, thank you. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Share this with everyone you know. I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller. And always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. Yeah, yeah, yeah.